And it's time to get the technical trades for the morning. Ashwini Gurjal, Sudarshan Sukhani and Mitesh Thakkar with us. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, well, Ashwini, what's the uh, sense now? Yesterday, we did move about 100 points from the day's low, even if we moved uh, 50 points from the day's high. Uh, is there a long trade today? Well, good morning. First of all, there need not be a trade every day. I mean, yesterday, people should have made fairly decent money. And today could be the day when they could lose a part of that. Okay. So, given a choice, uh, I want to hold back. Monday was a trending up day, so chances are some people made money. Yesterday was also a big range day. Today that range could become narrower. And narrow ranges can sometimes be difficult to trade. So yesterday's boundaries, which is uh, 10, 750, about 10, 900. Uh, that should be your benchmark where if hit either of the two, uh, you should try to take a trade, but if we are chopping around you know, 30, 40 points up and down, I don't think it's worthwhile trying to trade. So similarly, Bank Nifty, uh, yesterday we did 26, 750 to about 27, 200. Again, on either side of the boundaries, you can trade on the other side. So that way the market is range bound and you have these uh, two boundaries. If you get to the other end, uh, take a reverse position and that will help you in a choppy style market. Okay, all right. Um, so uh, perhaps choppy within the range, that is Ashni's call. Sudarshan, good morning. Would you look at a trade on the index now that we're approaching the, the old highs once again? Uh, good morning. Well, today is a day when there is a significant amount of confusion. Yesterday's choppy market cancelled the uptrend at least for the time being mm -hmm. and a new down move is not imminent. So what uh, I am doing is simply letting the index be, be. There is a trade which I will take and that's a very unlikely trade. If the Nifty starts sliding below 10,800, I would be willing to take a short position. Mm -hmm. Given today's early morning open, that event may not happen. If that doesn't happen, I am not trading on any side above 10,800. So just focus on stocks. Okay, uh, point taken. Uh, so similar views, uh, you don't have to take a index trade uh, since uh, the lines are not very clear. Mitesh Thakkar, good morning. What would be your sense? <coughs> good morning, Lata. I think uh, we are basically uh, you know, not showing signs of any trend. Yesterday also when we were falling during the day, I said that the decline would be arrested very soon. I didn't expect a very strong bounce back, but I thought the fall would not happen because the directional indicators have again started turning very flat. So I think we're doing broadly a range of 10,750, give and take 20 points, 10,920, give and take 20 points on the upside. This 200 point band could be enforced for the next few days to come by. So in that sense, try to trade near the edges. That's where we'll go long uh, around the 10,750, 760 zone. And on the upside around 10,920, explore some shorting opportunities. Okay, all right. Um, so let's talk about stocks then, Ashni. Uh, in that case, what's on the list today if the indices are not giving a very clear directional call? Then stocks? All buys. See, the markets are choppy, so there are both uh, you know, buy and sell ideas. I tend to get biased towards uh, the long side because the market is still kind of rising. Mm -hmm. uh, but the interesting call would be probably Infosys, which was down yesterday. And often what happens is like you have this sort of, uh, you know, report which is against the text. It's likely it opens lower and then finds buying and tends to rise. So uh, I like to buy into stuff that was down yesterday. So Infosys is a buy with a stop of 730, target of 765. Medialite is a buy with a stop of uh, 1115, target of 1135. Axis Bank is a buy with a stop of 705, target of 724. DB's Lab is a buy with a stop of 1600, target of 1645. And Sun TV continues to move on, that's a buy with a stop of 600, target of 625. Okay, okay all right. So that's an all buy list from Ashwini coming through. Uh, Sudarshan, oh, what are you going with the more of a mixed call? Indigo. Well, it's uh, primarily a mix uh, and uh, it's mainly mid caps because as I explained, the index is creating a lot of confusion for me. Uh, starting with Indigo, I'm very uh, so upbeat on Indigo. I can see the stock, at least I hope it goes much higher than where it is now. It's an investment idea, but
But for today, Indigo is on the verge of a small breakout from a trading range and we can look for strong up, upside momentum. Mm -hmm. That's Indigo for you. That's a buying opportunity. The second buy is NIT Tech. Same chart. It's an outperformer in the IT sector. Yesterday, it saw gains and on the verge of breaking out from a small consolidation again. Similar chart. So buy Indigo, buy NIT Tech and by Voltas. Voltas is not at the top of its chart. It's coming out of a deep correction. But that correction seems to be getting over for the short term. It's a buy on dips opportunity and worth taking. There are two short sales, Tata Chemicals. If you see the chart, you'll see it makes lows every day. Something is going there which we don't understand. But the charts tell us to sell and India Bulls housing. I'm very downbeat on all NBFCs. So you could really close your eyes and pick any one of them. India Bulls housing is the weakest of them, one of the weakest. That's a short sell. Okay. But, uh, you know, Sudarshan, is that positional? And I'll tell you why. There are minor positives immediately on the horizon. For one, they were sold yesterday. The DHFL news is not all that negative, uh, the downgrade that came yesterday. And then the Reserve Bank, uh, of course, is going to uh, pump in 25,000 crores in the first two weeks of March. That was news that came yesterday night. All these are minor immediate positives. So today, is it a sell right away? Is it a sell if it rises? Uh, all the NBFCs. Uh, if, if the NBFCs rise today, it's a perfect condition to go and sell into the rally. I do not think that a small, whatever news items come will have a major impact. So it okay. is a positional sell and the rally is welcome to be sold into. Okay. Well, actually, uh, Mitesh, uh, if you can hold on for a minute, uh, we have a guest who has joined us uh, and that's uh, an important corporate event. Uh, it's official now. The Reserve Bank has removed Alabad Bank and Corporation Bank from the prompt corrective action list. And uh, the surprise exclusion, uh, the surprise inclusion, of course, is Dhanlakshmi Bank. For the moment, of course, Alabad Bank on expected lines uh, out of the P prompt corrective action list. Mr. Malikarjun Rao, the managing director, has joined us on the phone line. Uh, good morning, Mr. Rao. Thank you very much. Uh, immediately, what does what difference does it make uh, to your business? Will you be able to lend more? Will you be able to lend to slightly more risky bets? What should we expect? The important factor is lifting of PCA has created a wonderful atmosphere in the entire Allahabad Bank uh, employee base. 24,000 strong employees, morale has gone up very high because of the lifting of PCA. On that note, I would like to thank Reserve Bank of India and Government of India for taking an initiative in this regard. With respect to credit deployment, even earlier occasions also have indicated that we already have a good amount of headroom for a credit deployment. So the plan what we made for March 19 as well as for June 19, on those lines we will continue. The only question is whether we will be taking a call to increase the little more risky assets. We would like to tread our path very carefully. In fact, we have used this time of PCA as a consolidation for us. And the year 2019-20 should be a good moment for consolidating the business position of Allahabad Bank, starting with Q1 where we would like to uh, come for uh, break even. That means we'd like to put the profits. These are our plans. At this point of time, as far as credit delivery is concerned, we don't have any concern uh, as we have already planned properly since we are closing down our Hong Kong branch. The credit uh, which is going to be liquidated there would be available for us to uh, what is called credit deployment within the RWA. Though RWA condition no longer is applicable, still we would like to tread the path very cautiously up to Q1 of the next financial year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Mr. Rao, now that you will be out of PCA, just give us uh, how the book is going to look in terms of asset quality as we go down the next couple of quarters. At the gross NPA levels, at the end of Q3, you were close to 17.8%. Um, so are you looking at a lot of recoveries? Uh, is the slippage rate now generally going down? How will the book look, let's say, two, three quarters down the line? See, if you look at our gross NPA, 17.8 and and 7.7 .7 was the net NPA. Now, uh, NCLT and non-NCLT cases, if you look at in Q4, we, are tar we have targeted for recovery of 2,000 crores, recovery and upgradation together, without considering the NCLT. Now, in NCLT also, I'm very confident of another 2,000 to 2,500 crores getting recovery. So if these two click, that is NCLT also, a couple of cases are very featured in the final stage. If we get the recovery before March, definitely there will be a good amount of reduction in gross NPA as well as in net NPA. In any case, net NPA, we are expected to bring below uh, 6% in terms of the capital infusion, which has already taken care. So we are very confident that uh, if the NCLT cases come up for uh, resolution, our gross NPA will be reduced by Q3, uh, in Q4 itself. The question of asset quality maintenance and uh, 
Credit underwriting. These are the two important issues which we will be consolidating very closely in the financial year 1920. The corporate segment uh, accretion into MTI has come down, except for IL and FS, which we are waiting for the decision. Though there was a decision yesterday from NCLA indicating that the account should be maintained as a standard only. We are just waiting in the, uh, to see the uh, clarity in terms of the judgment. However, this is the only area where it can create a amount of inconvenience. Nevertheless, I am not expecting the, uh, expecting the same to impact our balance sheet in the 1920. No exposure to Ireland FSR? It is 1,225 crores. Okay. Have you already marked it as NPA? We have already marked NPA to the extent of uh, 380 crores. So will you what, write back provision or just keep it as floating or standard? No, no, no. We, we, we don't like to. Uh, okay. The reason is, uh, uh, what it is, with due respect to the decision, whatever he's sure. been given, sure. we don't like to write back the provision. We don't like to Fair recognize enough. the interest. Fair enough. And just to clarify, you said you will be in the black in the first quarter of FY20, right? Correct, correct. Okay, all right. Mr. Rao, pleasure speaking with you. All the very best. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, certainly a morale booster for a bank when it comes out of the prompt corrective action, which means the headmaster is not watching every step. So that's certainly a positive. Okay, back to you, Mitesh. Uh, sorry for that uh, gap. Uh, what stocks are you trading? Uh, I have a mix of buy and sell calls. Bharat Port looks like has given a good breakout above swing pivot levels. So keep a stop at 498, look for targets of 522. NMDC is something which the structure has improved drastically in the last few days, but needs to get past 98 levels. So buy above 98, keep a stop at 96.5, look for a first target of 102. And also buy on a cash stock, that's Quest Corp, with a stop at 680. Recommend uh, uh, to buy this one for targets of 730. And I have one sell call on UBL, where the indicator setup is turning weak. So keep a stop at 1351, look for targets close to about 1300. All right. Okay. Thank you for that, Mitesh. We'll come back as uh, we get closer to the opening. By the way, the uh, SGX Nifty has picked up. And some of the markets like the Hong Kong Hang Seng, even mainland China, most of Asia is now picking up some more momentum and steam. We'll take a break on that note. On the other side, VK Sharma of HDFC Securities joins in with some uh, FNO trading strategies. Also, we'll be in conversation with SP Tulsian of sptulsian.com. <laughs>